the first thing we're going to have to do is obtain a Fortran compiler. Those of you who are experienced with computer programming already know all about how to obtain a compiler and install it and do all of that sort of thing, but a good number of you probably are not. So right now, I'm thinking primarily of Windows users. I wanna show you two compilers that you can get that are really easy to deal with and are free. One of them has a minor annoying feature, but we'll talk about that when we get there. Firstly, we wanna talk about Silverfrost, and secondly, we wanna talk about Force. Firstly, open a web browser and do a web search for Silverfrost. Now, I've already done this in the past, so it auto-completed for me. So we'll just go ahead and hit Enter. After a moment, up comes the Silverfrost homepage. This is a Fortran compiler together with the IDE called Plato. This is free for personal use. If you read all of their documentation, it turns out personal use includes using it for your classwork. If you want, you can try Silverfrost for free right now by downloading the personal edition. So you follow this link, you eventually get to the place where you download the actual installer. It's an ordinary Windows EXE installer. You go with all of the defaults and very shortly it installs itself. I'm not going to make you suffer through that. Instead, I'm actually going to run the IDE that comes with it. I'm gonna go up here to File, New, New File. Now, we wanna have a free format Fortran file for reasons we may talk about at some other time. I've adjusted my colors to make it look nicer to me. Usually it's the white background with darker letters on the front. I'm going to make up a little program. All it's going to do is print hello world to the screen. Print star obviously is going to print something. The star means use the default output device, which these days is a screen. Then there's a comma and whatever you care to print out. In this case, it's just the character string, hello world. And as usual in these kind of things, we put the character string inside of parentheses. I'm going to go directly to build. I'd like to start run, but I haven't saved my file yet, so it's going to complain about that. So I have to give this a name. I'll call it pi.f90. The f90 is important. That tells the compiler to interpret the instructions in the file in terms of one of the modern versions of Fortran, not the atrocious Fortran 77 or earlier. We'll go down here to save. Then we have to build the executable. And here's the annoying part. Silverfrost, at least in the free version, puts up a five or 10 second advertisement reminding you that you're using the free version. This is a minor annoyance. It's so minor, we should ignore it because this is a fairly sophisticated compiler and they're letting us use it for free. So really we can't complain too much about that. As you can see in this little window, it says, hello world. And then it says, press return to close window. 
they mean the output window, of course. So I had to press return twice, but then it goes back to my source file. I'm not going to do anything terribly sophisticated today, but I want to at least indicate how you do a loop. So I'm going to put in a line up above do I equals one comma ten. Inside of a loop, it's good practice to indent. It should be fairly obvious to you what this is going to do. It's going to go around in a loop 10 times, once for each value of i, i being 1 to 10 in this case. It's going to print hello world out. Then it goes around to the next i value until it reaches the specified ending i value. And then that's the end of the program. As before, it's going to ask me to update the executable. Then it's going to put the advertisement up, no license necessary. And then it's going to print hello world 10 times. This is as sophisticated as I'm going to get today. This is silver frost. I'm going to be really lazy I'm going to copy and paste this into the other compiler so I don't have to type it again. The other compiler has a little problem of its own, but we'll see that when we get there. File, exit, save. The other really easy compiler for Windows is the force compiler. Go back to your web browser, and this time, do a search for force. Now, by default, this takes me to the Windows version, and you need to be aware that there is a G4Trans setup.exe a G95 setup.exe, and then there's the one you absolutely want to stay away from. You don't want G77. That's the Fortran 77. And unless you're feeling really brave, you probably don't want the beta version of Force 3. The one that I recommend getting is this one. As usual, you click on the link, it downloads the installer, you run it. And then pretty soon, as with Silver Frost, you're in business. So here, I'm going to run Force. I've already installed it. I don't think it's necessary to show that. Up comes my window. So new. I'm going to see if I can't paste the stuff from the other file. And it did paste it, although the formatting got a little odd. So let me fix that up. Do I equal 1 to 10, print star hello world, end do. I'm going to see if I can't run that now. It'll probably ask me to save files or update the executable or some such thing. We have to give this one a name. I'll call it something different from what we called it before. I'll call it fred.f90. And something happened, but it's not altogether clear what. Uh, there is a default source one file, but that's not part of what we're building right now. The problem with force is it doesn't automatically wait for you to look at the output at the end. There's a couple of ways I can get around this. One way, and some compilers I have to mention 
don't like this command, I can just say pause. Then I'll run it again. We'll have to save the file and all that sort of thing. There's my 10 iterations of Hello World. It says, to resume execution type go, other input will terminate the job. I press the enter key and it took me back to my window. Your task, do this right away, either gain access to a Fortran compiler through some mechanism or source that you already know about, or get force or get silver frost and make sure that you can run the hello world program you need to do this right away because as we go along we're going to be using this fortran business on a routine basis we're going to be using it as sort of a super calculator macintosh people i'm not that familiar with the mac I've got a Mac Mini at home. I'm going to experiment a little bit and see what I can find out for you. So if you've got a Mac, I'll see what I can do. In the meantime, I hope everyone has a good day and that this was at least somewhat helpful to you.